We see Iran in the first three weeks sentencing to death a former U.S. Marine. We see them threatening to choke off the Straits of Hormuz, the most strategic passage of oil supply in the world. We see the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, testing missiles and even being so bold as to threaten the United States if they sent terriers back in, into the international waters of the Persian Gulf. And even today, Iran remains the major supporter of Assad in Syria. That's just in the first three weeks. Both the United States and our European allies have been trying to change the behavior of this nation state, so to speak, by threatening or by using the tools of the central bank and its oil. These sanctions against both. These are long overdue, but they are not nearly enough. If you consider the gravity of the situation today, we have got to use some of the other tools in our kit bag of national power. Doing nothing or using the slow motion bureaucratic tools that we have used up to this point is almost a total waste of time when it comes to dealing with Iran. It is time to publicly and openly acknowledge our enemy, and the Tehran mullahs are clearly our enemy. They obviously have not been convinced that Iran should behave like a mature nation state. And I think the Arab Spring which made them somewhat jittery to start with and probably even more paranoid because they are now so very uncertain about what the disenchanted, restive young population, the millions of whom poured into the streets in 2009, their young people, will do today. And this brings me really to my key point in this regard, and that is that the United States, must, we must address, should address, and indeed must address the fact that we've got to use every tool in our kit bag when we deal with Iran. The Obama administration can, with a stroke of a pen, just one stroke, make Tehran even more jittery. We can send shock waves to the mullahs, and we can certainly energize the Iranian people without having to spend a dime or without having to send one Marine or U.S. soldier into harm's way. Understanding our enemy includes understanding that it, or to Iran it is the enemy within. The mullah's nightmare is to see the United States remove the MEK from its list of terrorist organizations since the MEK is Tehran's arch enemy. And when you look from Iran's, through Iran's eyes and you see Mrs. Rajavi with her ten-point program designed to ensure that the people of Iran enjoy the same rights, uh, uh, freedoms, and privileges that other democratic nations around the world enjoy, you can see why it causes them to be paranoid. But for Mrs. Rajavi's program to be effective, it has to be implemented, which can only happen when the Iranian people change this theocratic, autocratic regime that they live in today. And that starts with the U.S. taking the MEK off the FTO list. It must be done, and it must be done immediately. Yet, our State Department's delay, silence, and inaction in this case is incomprehensible. More importantly, what kind of a message does this send to the Tehran mullahs and even to Iraq's Maliki when they see that we have them on the FTO, FTO list? And twice Maliki has used that message to, as a reason for his unprovoked attacks against the unarmed residents of, of Ashraf. Disarming, and who, who, disarming the, uh, the MEK is why we guaranteed them protected person status initially, and it's why the U.S. should feel, must feel, like they have an obligation to ensure that they are not attacked again. 
And the first thing they could do to ensure that is to take the MEK off the list. You've got a group of my distinguished...